the architect of the secret invasion, the hand pulling the invisible strings behind a series of horrific events in Marvel Comics, an exile, and a queen, let's talk about Varanki. First, thanks for watching JLS Comics. Hit that subscribe button so you can keep up with all of our weekly content. And with that out of the way, let's jump right into our story. The rise of Varanki in the Marvel Universe came at one of its most tumultuous times. In the early aughts, the Avengers were disassembled after Jack of Hearts wandered onto the grounds of Avengers Mansion as a human bomb and detonated, destroying the iconic compound. Hawkeye, Ant-Man, Vision, and many others were killed, and as a result, both the official Avengers and formal X-Men teams were disbanded. Some faded into retirement and depression, while others went to ground and continued fighting covertly. Wanda Maximoff, the Scarlet Witch, was starting to lose control of herself after a memory of her children that Agatha Harkness had suppressed came back, which would lead into House of M. But this all created a scenario on Earth perfect for a nefarious and insidious plot that would continue to shake the entire Marvel Universe to its core because it would come to be realized that the superheroes of Earth couldn't even trust their peers and friends. Enter the Skrulls. Similar to what happened on planet Earth, eons ago the Celestials appeared on the Skrull's homeworld of Skrullos and performed DNA and genetic experiments that resulted in multiple branches. Prime Skrulls with no powers, Deviant Skrulls who could shapeshift, and Eternal Skrulls like Kleban who had powers and who aged incredibly slowly. The three races warred and fought and the Deviant Skrulls ended up wiping out most of the Prime and Eternal Skrulls, becoming the dominant race. The Skrulls then continued to evolve and conquer countless worlds in the Andromeda Galaxy, with hundreds of worlds falling to their might, forming the intergalactic Skrull Empire, and then warring with other empires like the Kree Empire. In fact, a massive Kree-Skrull war almost hit this island Earth as a cosmic beachhead during their war. A secret society of superheroes from Earth, comprised of Reed Richards, Tony Stark as Iron Man, Black Bolt, Namor, Doctor Strange, and Professor Xavier, who together represented different aspects of the Marvel Universe and who formed a covert group called the Illuminati, traveled to the Skrulls' Imperial Throne World of Tarnax IV to warn them to keep their war away from planet Earth. Their message of violence and defiance was met with temporary imprisonment, where the Skrulls were able to take their DNA, study humans, and perform their own experiments in cloning and replication. Within the Skrull society, there was a sect full of religious zealots called the Darvan Sect. One of the Darvan Sect was a Skrull princess, princess of the Tyrank Seven province named Princess Varanki. The Darvan sect predicted that the Skrull Empire would be wiped out by what would come to be Galactus and later the Annihilation Wave and Varenki took this to the ruler Doric Seven to warn him that it was a prophecy foretold in Holy Scripture. Doric wouldn't act so Varenki berated him accusing him of being a coward and of ignoring the words of the prophets and that if he wouldn't act he was unfit for the throne. Doric called her an insane religious zealot and he ordered her exiled to a deserted prison planet. But after Galactus did indeed come and destroy the Skrull homeworld, Varenki was brought out of exile. Those loyal to her met her on the planet and called her Queen, Empress of the Skrull Empire. Queen Varenki was pissed that the Illuminati had had the audacity to come to their world and threaten them and she put together her plot. She told her people that to avoid annihilation, according to scripture, that Earth was rightfully theirs and that they'd make Earth their new homeworld. Her new goal was to capture heroes of Earth and replace them with shape-shifting Skrull versions to have an entire army in place on Earth before humans even realized it. An army capable of rendering the human civilization subservient, hence why the strongest of superpowered beings were selected for the replacement phase of the operation. The real Spider-Woman had lost her powers and had decided to go deep undercover, working with Nick Fury at S.H.I.E.L.D. to penetrate Hydra. Some of the Hydra agents she encountered were actually Skrulls, and they were able to sedate Jessica after convincing her to undergo a procedure promising to return her powers to her, and so they captured her, which allowed Queen Varenki to take her place, really continuing to be the focal point and spearhead of this Skrull takeover attempt. Since Varenki was technically still banished, and she wanted to lead her people, she opted to spearhead the invasion force. It wouldn't be until 2022 when we learned that Varenki chose Jessica because she believed Jessica had great leadership qualities and she could exploit those to make the Skrull takeover of Earth easier. I honored you by choosing you, she would later tell Spider-Woman. And indeed, the people they went after were the ones who were most influential, most powerful. Once all the pieces were in place and replaced, the Skrulls each underwent a Skrull infiltration ritual to give the Skrull the memories and superpowers of the person they were replacing and to allow them to remain undetected by the likes of Wolverine's olfactory prowess, Doctor Strange's magical powers, or the X-Men's Cerebro or other manner of detection. 
In fact, Ferenki was so imbued with the essence of Jessica Drew that during the House of M event, it was Jessica's wishes and desires that came to fruition, not Ferenki's, though she and the scrolls remained aware of that reality-altering event while it was happening. A female scroll named Siri was one of the first to head to Earth to replace a human. Queen Varenki sent Ciri to take the place of Electra Nachios, and she remained as Electra until her death, and then Queen Varenki's love, a male scroll named Pagon, took Electra's place, commissioned Max Dillon Electro to stage a massive breakout at the supervillain Supermax facility called The Raft, which at that time was where fake Jessica Drew had been stationed. But this would later be exposed when Echo stabbed Electra through the chest and reverted back to his scroll form. And remember I mentioned Doric 7 who had exiled Varenki? Well, Doric 8 is Teddy Altman, aka Hulkling, who ended up joining the Young Avengers and pairing up with Billy Kaplan, aka Wiccan. As a result of the Raft prison escape, the new Avengers came together to chase after the fugitives and absconders, and so the Skrull version of Spider-Woman ended up joining with the new Avengers team. With her new team, one of their first missions was in the Savage Land, where they ended up fighting with Savage Land mutates before heading back to base. Fake Spider-Woman chased after the Wrecker, Cloak and Dagger, battled with Ultron at a party, and even fought with the Hand after Echo joined the team later. And right after this, Captain America confronted Fake Spider-Woman about her double agent activities, which she admitted to. She was still working with Nick Fury who had her infiltrating Hydra, and so this Fake Spider-Woman during this time was a triple agent, working Avengers, S.H.I.E.L.D. and Hydra simultaneously, but truly a quadruple agent since she was also a Skrull. She fought foes like Red Hulk and Doctor Doom during this time period, nearly costing Varenki her life, as well as learning about another scroll devastation after Annihilus and his massive cosmic armada and their Harvester of Sorrows came out of the negative zone to invade. Her dual agent status was exposed during the Civil War event when Tony Stark found out and reported it to acting S.H.I.E.L.D. director Maria Hill. In turn, Director Hill ordered Jessica captured. They found her hiding under the name Sybil Devora, which is Gypsy Moth's real name, and S.H.I.E.L.D. put her in a brig on a helicarrier, but then a Hydra strike team assaulted the helicarrier to free her. She then went to link up with Captain America's Secret Avengers, who were part of the faction opposing Maria Hill, S.H.I.E.L.D., Iron Man, and the Superhuman Registration Act during Civil War, and she asked to join them. When the Civil War was over, Fake Spider-Woman went with the new Avengers to Tokyo, Japan to confront the Hand and Fake Elektra. Echo stabbed this fake Electra, killing her, which exposed the scroll underneath and the scroll infiltration. Spider-Woman then betrayed the Avengers, stealing the body and taking the scroll body and delivering it to Tony Stark, which was an attempt to cause even more upheaval, so discord, and cause even more fracturing of the allegiances as paranoia and dread spread through the Avengers teams. They were just off a civil war, they were still on edge and already hesitant to trust each other. This revelation put them over the edge. She then joined up with the Mighty Avengers, after meeting with Tony Stark, to continue to sabotage from within, though she didn't say that. And they were rightfully suspect of her for a variety of reasons, but especially because Jessica was part of the anti-registration faction during Civil War, directly opposing many on this new team. And to make things worse, Black Bolt, King of the Inhumans, and member of the Illuminati, turned out to be a Skrull too. It was then that we got into the Secret Invasion story. Varenki used a transport ship loaded with scrolls whose minds had been wiped and made to believe that they were superheroes of Earth but 1970s versions. The Earthbound ship was detected by Abigail Brand up on the peak, which was S.W.O.R.D.'s orbital headquarters, who detected its crash trajectory, and when it crashed in the Savage Land, it was part of Varenki's plan. In fact, it was a ploy to lure Stark's Mighty Avengers and Luke Cage's New Avengers teams to the scene. Her plan was to trap both teams in the Savage Land while other Skrulls rose up, including a Super Skrull army in New York, to take over Earth. And as soon as both Avengers teams arrived on scene in the Savage Land, the peak space station blew up a near-Earth orbit, nearly destroying it. Although Abigail Brand managed to put a force field around herself and survive. Varenki and the Skrulls immediately began with cyber attacks, uploading a Skrull virus to take out a S.H.I.E.L.D. helicarrier, infecting Tony Stark to get rid of his extremists, stripping him of control of his tech and his battle suits, and ordering the assassination of others like Richard Ryder, Nova, and even Doric 8, which was Teddy, aka Hulkling. In the Savage Land, in the confusion, Spider-Woman was alone with Echo, and she took Echo out with a shock of energy. Skrull Spider-Woman then went to Tony Stark, who was badly hurt from the virus, and tried to repair his technology from the uploaded virus, and she kissed him, then told him thanks for helping her people, trying to convince him that he too was a Skrull. But before everything came together, Varenki was shot by Black Widow, trying to save Iron Man, and she barely managed to escape. Then after Abigail Brand saved Reed Richards from Skrull imprisonment, he made a weapon to detect who is and isn't a Skrull, and the tide finally turned in their favor. 
Varenki then went to Camp Hammond, which was a training camp for the initiative for newly registered heroes built on the site of the Stanford tragedy. This Camp Hammond was now a Skrull stronghold, but she was again almost shot and killed by Henry Gyrick's special ops team within the initiative called the Shadow Initiative. Varenki gathered up her Skrull and Super Skrull army to lead them in final battle against the heroes of Earth, but Hercules and the God Squad had murdered a couple of Skrull gods, which hurt the Skrulls because they believed they were there on Earth with God on their side, often quoting from Skrull scripture, saying he loves them. Varenki and her army battled the heroes of Earth in a massive fight in New York City's Central Park. Reed Richards yelled out to get to the Queen to Varenki's Spider-Woman, and Wolverine said he was on it. Varenki battled with Wolverine and she shocked him before Wolverine managed to stab Varenki with his claws, impaling her shoulder and gravely wounding her. Then Kate Bishop was wounded in the fight, so Clint Barton as Ronan, already livid the Skrulls impersonated Bobby Morse, grabbed the compound bow, took out four Skrulls, then shot and mortally wounded Queen Varenki with an arrow right through her face. And though she was badly wounded, clawed up by Wolverine and her jaw barely still attached from that arrow, Varenki was still alive. The heroes and villains of Earth stood in front of her in defiance, and as Wolverine went in for another attack, Norman Osborn, the Green Goblin, very violently and very publicly, news helicopters were hovering above, shot Varenki in the head, seemingly killing her, which led to his taking power and control, making his own Avengers team, and leading the Thunderbolts from Thunderbolt Mountain, and setting up his own nefarious initiatives, as well as leading a counter-Illuminati group called the Cabal. Then Thor flew up to the Skrull Armada and found the real heroes who had been replaced, including the real Jessica Drew Spider-Woman, and freed them all. Earth had beat back Queen Varenki's secret invasion. Varenki was then sent to Erebus. This was likely symbolic of her courting death, barely alive for a while. Norman Osborn kept Varenki imprisoned as a trophy, bringing her back from the brink of death yet keeping her locked up. And with Osborn's torturous help, Varenki did not die. In Spider-Woman issue 19, which is part of the Devil's Reign story arc, Mayor Wilson Fisk, formerly the Kingpin, was targeting costumed heroes and attacking Jessica Drew and her loved ones. Also as head of Ravencroft Institute for the Criminally Insane, Fisk also ended up freeing a prisoner from within that Spider-Woman believed long dead. He freed Queen Varenki from confinement. Fisk said he was the one who provided a convenient storage facility for Norman Osborn's trophy. But all that time she was sitting there in confinement, Varenki was obsessed with taking out Jessica Drew, reliving the events that happened, wondering what could have been if things were different, and Fisk was more than happy to oblige Varenki, letting her out. Her first act was to shift back into Spider-Woman form, and she headed to kidnap Jess's son. Varenki took the baby from Night Nurse just as Spider-Woman showed up and the two fought in the middle of the street. Varenki still had Jess's powers, but Jess managed to land a kick to Varenki's face and then chased after her child while Varenki sat on the ground, bleeding profusely. Varenki changed into Iron Man form and fought with Spider-Woman more in the armored truck that Jess's baby was in. Spider-Man showed up, followed by Carol Danvers' Captain Marvel, but Carol was Varenki shapeshifted too, and she was holding Jess's baby when the real Carol Danvers showed up on scene. Jessica Drew's baby Jerry zapped the bad Carol, exposing Varenki's scroll form again, and the two fought again, with years of built-up and pent-up anger and resentment and rage and hatred and frustration and emotion powering their fists and strikes as rubble, debris, and blood filled their battlefield. Varenki kept transforming, but then Spider-Woman grabbed Varenki by the head and shocked her, electric chair style, and Varenki was knocked out. Jessica then handed over the limp and unconscious body of Varenki to Captain Marvel for imprisonment, and that's where she sits now, biding her time, plotting, stewing in her hatred for Jessica, wondering what would have happened if she picked another hero to replace during Secret Invasion, and wondering if that's what she should do when the Secret Invasion becomes live action. But we'll have to wait and see, which means that's a wrap on this one, my friends. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe, and you'll be one of the first to know when I upload videos just like this every week. I'm Jesse, this is JLS Comics, and I'll see you soon.